What's up YouTube? This is Luke Wilson with Wilson Auto Detailing and today's video is very special because it is the intro to polishing. I am about to record a weekly polishing video, put them all into a polishing playlist and at the end of, well, many weeks from now, you will have a resource that is extremely valuable. This is going to be a sort of college crash course for free of all things polishing. So I'm gonna be talking about what is a polish? How do you use it? When do you use it? What polishes do you use? What's a sealant? What's the difference between a sealant, a polish, and a compound? What kind of buffers do you use? DA buffers, rotary buffers, everything under the sun that could possibly be related or fit into the category of polishing will absolutely be covered in this crash course. So definitely be on the lookout every week for the new polishing video. This video in particular is just an intro. So we're going to cover things like what is a polish, what does polishing accomplish, some of the most foundational things that need to be understood about polishing before we actually get into it, and some misnomers and kind of disclaimers and myths that surround the subject of polishing. Now, let's get right into it. Now, the most basic question that we could probably ask is simply, what is a polish? Now, the answer to this question is going to vary somewhat based on who you ask, but let's go ahead and get the Google definition of a polish. A polish is a broad term for a range of processes designed to either remove or mask subsurface paint defects and greatly enhance surface gloss normally to prepare it for a sealant or a wax. Now that's kind of a broad definition of what polishing is, but let's go ahead and get into the nitty-gritty of the product of a polish specifically. Now a polish is gonna cr is gonna come mostly in three different forms, either a spray, a liquid, or a cream of sorts. And a polish is going to be anything that contains either chemical solvents or abrasives that, ha that, that has a job of removing surface scratches, scrapes, even some things sometimes like grease or grime or dirt in certain aspects, or even sometimes things like paint splatter. Now it doesn't, most, most polishes are considered, you know, abrasive, meaning they have little tiny gritty pieces in them. Them, um, which is an abrasive, but some polishes are actually what we would call like chemical abrasives or chemical solvent polishes, which don't actually remove scratches through abrasives, but remove it through sort of a chemical cleaning more so process. Now a polish is all the time used before waxing or before sealing, and it does not provide a layer of protection for the paint. Now, once again, that's kind of a blanket statement because nowadays we have polishes that are an all-in-one or a three-in-one that do provide some sort of protection, but what I'm talking about is the traditional definition of the word polish. It's not going to provide a protective layer to the paint. Now, different kinds of polishes are going to have varying degrees of of abrasiveness. However, a polish really is dedicated for removing only surface scratches. When scratches get below the surface and below the clear coat, you move into something called wet sanding, and that is not for this video. But polishes are dedicated to removing surface, more top coat scratches. Now, what exactly does a polish do, or how does the polish actually remove the scratches? Well, check out this diagram real fast. So you can see here that when there's a scratch in the paint, it almost is kind of like a valley when you're looking at it from a side view. It's a piece of the clear coat that has been um, kind of taken out out. Now, what polishing is going to do, what the abrasives do in the polish is to some degree, the abrasives actually thin out that landscape. In other words, because the scratch is like a valley in the clear coat, when you scratch, you're scratching kind of a part of the clear coat off is kind of a good way to think about it. And you have this dip in the clear coat, which is the scratch. Well, the abrasives are almost leveling out the playing field. So again, in this graph, what the abrasives are going to do is bring that top layer of the clear coat down to the bottom most 
uh, level of that scratch so that you're not actually filling in the scratch. That's not actually what the process is. It's really taking the other playing field down to the most bottom level of that scratch so that that's how the scratch sort of goes away or disappears is that that level of the clear coat is taken down to the bottom crest of the scratch. Now I hope that makes sense. It's kind of, it's a lot more simpler than I probably explained it just then, but Polishing does level out the clear coat to an extent, but it's very minimal. And when you talk about leveling out clear coat or you're talking, you're talking about smoothing out clear coat, you're really referring more to something called wet sanding, but again, we're just gonna keep this video about polishing. Now, of course, those abrasives and that polish is going to help either improve, mask, or really just restore the paint from things like swirl marks, uh, bird drop etchings, um, bug etchings, water uh, water spot etchings, things like that. Um, these surface issues in cars paint that we deal with like watermarks, bugs, um, etchings, and swirl marks from scratching or wash scratch. That's what polishing is really dedicated to fixing. Now a ton of modern day polishes have something called diminishing abrasives in them, which basically means that those abrasives break down further and further into smaller and smaller particles as they're worked into the paint. And this allows you to not have to kind of go through varying degrees of abrasiveness with different polishes. You can kind of accomplish what you're trying to get in one step and in one product rather than going from a heavy cutting polish to a more uh, lighter cutting polish. It, the diminishing abrasives allow you to kind of skip those middleman steps. Now in order to illustrate my point a little bit better to help you guys understand exactly what a polish is, I've got my polishing kit right here and I just pulled out two of my favorite polishes which if you've detailed for any amount of time and, and done any paint correction or polishing you'll be familiar with these. This is Meguiar's 105 and Meguiar's 205. Now here's a great illustration for uh, showing the difference between the abrasiveness and the levels of abrasiveness between polishes. Meguiar's 105, you can actually see it, it's scales it out here for you um, how uh, aggressive um, the abrasives are and of course the more aggressive the polish is that just means the more cutting it's going to do the more um, heavy-duty correction it's going to provide it's going to kind of fix uh, heavy-duty or scratches whereas something like this which is Meguiar's 205 um, it's a little bit less aggressive on this scale so you can see them side by side this one's more aggressive this one's less aggressive now with polishing, obviously, you're going to go from more aggressive to least aggressive because let's think about it like a woman who's getting her fingernails done at the spa. Well, the people who are doing the manicure are going to use uh, that nail filer and sand the nail bed, right? They're going to sand her nail. Well, that makes the nail all cloudy and white. Well, how do they kind of get that nail to be shiny and glossy again? Well, they sand it because the sanding makes the nail surface completely smooth. There are no ridges or valleys or anything. It's a completely smooth, uniform surface. Then, they use that high-powered tiny, tiny, tiny little buff first spinning tool and it's got a uh a little pad on the end and they put a tiny bit of what you could think of as polish on it and then they click that little button and it spins really really fast and they work that polish into the fingernail and then of course it comes out glossy and then they finish it with a clear coat or a clear nail polish and they paint that on and that fills in all the tiny, tiny, tiny fine scratches that you can barely even see. And it's the same sort of illustration with polishing. You level out the car's surface and then um, what that does is it removes those scratches to a degree because again, it's just like the filer your nail has a bunch of little ridges and stuff, but sanding it down makes a uniform surface and then you apply that polish and it makes things shiny and glossy again. That's what it's doing to the car paint. It's leveling out the surface to a degree. It's really, you don't really level out the surface with polishing as much as you do wet sanding, but again, the point remains the same. Now to understand more of what's going on with polishes at a more kind of microscopic level, 
polishing, and you might have picked up on this already, but polishing accomplishes what it accomplishes in making the paint uh, kind of restored to its original luster, removing fine swirl marks, removing fine scratches, through the abrasives that are in the product, in that the abrasives are going to, at a level, it's very minimal with just polishing, it happens much more with wet sanding, but at a level, the polishes remove a certain degree of the clear coat. And that's how it accomplishes what it accomplishes. It removes the clear coat to a level in whatever area you're working on. If you have a bug splatter that has etched into the clear coat, it removes a certain degree of the surrounding clear coat in order to level it out to a level playing field where you can no longer see the etching or the fine scratch. So the question becomes how often should should you polish a car because your clear coat is what protects the underlying paint from fading and it protects your car um, just the clear coat you know filters the UV rays it's the layer of protection so if you're removing that how often do you want to polish your car uh, people ask that question and the answer to that question is gonna vary depending on who you are depending on what kind of car you have and depending on what condition where you keep your car how your car drives how often you drive it and all that sort of stuff it needs to be understood that though polishing does remove a, a certain layer of the clear coat, it's so minimal that most people don't actually even talk about how polishing removes the clear coat. They only bring that up when you're talking about wet sanding because wet sanding does remove a greater level of the clear coat. But at the end of the day, polishing accomplishes the job of a polish to remove scratches, to remove swirls and stuff like that by removing a certain level of the clear coat. And so you can't polish your car on a super regular basis. And I mean that some people polish their car every year, every two years, every three years and that makes sense for the lifespan of the car but to polish a car every three months every six months um, even every year you know that for me that's a little excessive just because you know I don't know that that's a great idea because of what polishing does but again that's kind of you know more based and subjective uh, you know based on your opinion now most detailers especially detailers that are just starting out have all kinds of questions about polishing and they want to be trained on how to do it because they think it's so glamorous and so cool and so uh, financially just viable and you make so much money and they like carrying around one of these big toolboxes full of a buffer and polishing pads and they think it looks cool and professional which it does but I think sometimes we overestimate and over-exaggerate the profitability of polishing. In my detailing world, honestly, yes, I do polish a lot of cars, yes, I do um, have a lot of experience in it, but most of my money and my financial kind of living does not come from polishing jobs. It comes from maintenance details. It comes from regular interior and exterior details. It comes from kind of the foundational, fundamental stuff. Now, polishing is a great thing to know how to do. It's a great thing to include to make you a more versatile detailer, but I don't know that it's where the most profit is at all the time. <laughs> Now we've talked about what a polish is, what a polish does, and um, kind of why detailers want to be able to know how to polish and the profitability of it and things like that. But the very last thing I want to talk about in this specific intro to polishing crash course is the danger of not communicating enough with your customer before you polish. For example, because polishing does not actually fix scratches that are beneath the clear coat, sometimes you will polish a car and actually cause certain deep scratches to stand out even more than they did before because the polishing enhanced the gloss of the paint, it removed fine swirls, really restored that paint's original color and luster and vibrance, but it can't take away that deep scratch. And so now that deep scratch is sitting on a canvas that is just glossy and vibrant and bright and just looks new and which the contrast makes the scratch that was not removed and that cannot be removed 
removed through polishing, it makes that scratch actually stand out even more. And these are the things you have to communicate to your customer before you get in to polishing their vehicle. Now guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here because we could go on and on about polishing all day long, but really the two main things I wanted to communicate today is what makes a polish a polish and what does polishing do. Now once again, keep an eye out for the weekly polishing videos that are going to come out on the Wilson Auto Detailing channel. They'll all be put in a polishing playlist and once again, make sure you grab a hold of this content because this is free, valuable information that is literally like a college crash course on polishing detailing. So guys, make sure you watch these videos. And of course, if you are new here, make sure you consider subscribing because once again, I come out with daily videos on not only tips and tricks for the pro detailers, car enthusiasts, but also for the do-it-yourselfers regarding products, tools, and strategies to use, but also communication skills, business skills, and so much more. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up if it added some value and good content to your life. And if you have any questions or video ideas or comments or concerns, make sure to hook those up in the comment section below. And everyone, once again, from Luke Wilson here at Wilson Auto Detailing, I will catch you guys in the next video.